Hi guys. How are you doing? We're just uh, getting everyone in the meeting here. Looks like we've got just a few more people joining. Thanks for being here with me on this Friday. Happy Friday and uh, everyone's got my weather. <laughs> we've got bright sun today. All right, I think we're, I think we're good to get started. So um, tonight is a really fun class um, where we're going to make a pendant necklace that um, we named the Romance Pendant. And it's, it's going with this same theme um, that we were having for April of all just this, this gorgeous pearl jewelry in a kind of Regency romantic style, you know, reminiscent of old times. And um, that's the, the look we've been, we've been creating in some of our other classes. And here's a couple versions of the pendant. I've been playing with different colors this is one of those designs that you can truly make your own because you can use any colors you want. You can change up the chain style. You can put it on a chain. You can make a seed beaded chain and use any beads in any colors. So I'm gonna to switch to my, um, my mat and show you guys all of the materials. And as that's coming into focus, I'm gonna bring these back. Okay. And so what you see here are, um, you know, just some of the color ideas that I was experimenting with for tonight's class for, um, you know, that do really nicely under the camera. The original colorway for this design was a gorgeous silver. So I thought I would start with showing these materials in case this is the version that you're making at home. But for class today, I'm going to use our usual bright colors. So it'll come across really clear on the camera. Um, one of the first things that you'll need is actually step one is You'll need something like this. So these are briolette crystals. These are the ones that are in the handout. And they're just really pretty simple crystals. But um, an alternative to those is you could use any of the like check glass drops. You could try other kinds of crystals or briolettes, just anything you have. The ones I'm using today are gonna be these, um, these glass faceted teardrop shapes. And, and again, this number is in the handout. So there's that. And then you'll need some size eight seed beads. The handout calls out this color. This is the one that's used in the, um, you know, in the photo for the class. And you'll need super duos. This is the silver color that was used in the original design. And then there's um, these gorgeous pearls on the strand wall. And they're so pretty. And you could use in the handout this marbled gray. It's called out, and it it really just this, the silver brings out the gray and it's so pretty. But you could also just go with the marbled white and that's great too. I know it's hard to see on the camera, but those are, those are the materials, the, the beads anyway. And then as for um, the technical stuff, we've got Wildfire 0.006. And I'm using some size 12 beading needles. It's kind of my default whenever I am using a Super Duo bead. I tend to always just go with the 12, but you could use 10s and that would be fine because this design is not super tight and you, you should have no trouble using a 10. Um, and then for your clasp, um, you'll, I'll, I'll probably pull what I need in the way of findings from here, a findings pack, but any jump ring, six millimeter or so, you just need one and it just goes right at the top. So a six millimeter jump ring and um, any kind of chain you want, ball chain, um, cable chain, just anything that you have around that you like. Alternatively, you can make one. You could just use seed beads. This would use more thread than is called out in the handout, but I will speak to that when, when we get started working. So yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Those are all the materials. And so 45 inches of thread is how much it says to cut in the handout. And that's about, um, it's actually more than you need. But I always just kind of err on the side of more than less. And then I, I did forget to mention the scissors. Anything just to cut your thread that you have handy. Okay, and this is a two needle design. So if you were with us last week, this is one of those really fun designs where you can, you can get super creative and it speeds up the process to use two needles. Um, I'm going to grab a pair of chain nose pliers. This is optional, but it's a really neat trick 
if you have any trouble threading your needles, you just take and flatten them. This is the Wildfire um, 0.06, as, as we said, and it, um, it becomes a lot easier to thread in the needle once it's flattened a little bit. So that is all I'm doing here. Get that in there. Okay. So here's needle one. Yeah, see that makes it a lot easier. I'm just gonna set that aside for now. Here's my second needle on that other side. Almost got it. There we go. In there, that's that's probably the most challenging part of all the designs is just getting those threaded there, but we got it. And so what I did last week and um, what I recommend doing for this design as well is just kind of finding your tails and holding them over at about the same point. But it's not super critical, just it just helps. Okay, I'm going to get one crystal free from this strand here. All right. And so all you've got to do for step one is just to bring bring your needle through the top of that crystal. I know this is really hard to see, um, but I've just gone through it one time. Bring that down to the midpoint or so. And then grab some size 10 seed beads. And so I think for, um, for this design, I'm going to go with like an orange color just to make it contrast from my eights. You only need four of these <laughs> and that's all. And if you have 11s handy and you'd rather use 11s, they'll work too. You can also just use the eights. I think it'll also work. But on the um, samples, I used some size tens just at this spot right here. And bring those down. And so I put two on each needle. So let me get that out of the way here. So what you'll see here is two size 10 beads on either side of the crystal. And then um, hold it up, look at it, and just double check what you think of height wise. So some of these are drilled a little down a little further from the top than the others. And I came across one earlier where probably also for purposes of color matching that I just used some eights here. So that's an alternative just to think about as you're working. You will have to play with it a little bit to see what you like and what looks good. But there's there's some eights used on that one. And then on this one, you'll see I've used some tens. So it's just kind of getting it to custom fit the top of your briolette. Briolettes are super finicky like that. They're so beautiful, but um, you do have to play with it a little bit to get the look that you're going for. Okay, and the next thing you need is eight millimeter bead. I'm using these wooden beads because for our, for our camera, it's just a lot easier to see these. Earlier today, I was using these and there's just a lot of glare off of them, but they're so pretty. They're the ones I used here. So they're eight millimeter bead. I'm just using this wooden one so it'll be easier to see. Okay, and so you should get something a little bit like that. And again, if it's, if it's doing this thing where it kind of bows for you and you don't feel like it's gonna hang straight down, you can add more beads or go up to size eights and just see what you like the look of. I think this will work for what I'm for what I'm doing here. Let me get my eights. Okay, and so the first thing I want to do is bring both strands through one size eight bead. I think it'll let me get both these needles through it. Okay. 
bring that down. So you've got the crystal, the side beads, which are two tens for me, the size eight focal bead, and this size eight seed bead, eight millimeter focal bead and size eight seed bead. Okay, and so the next thing you'll wanna do is create, so last week we were doing little right, right angle weave segments. This is the same thing we did last week, with just a little twist at the top. So pick up two, size eights on one needle and then one size eight on the other and you'll want to just bring the side that only has one through that one that has two just through the first one not through both of them just through that first one it's kind of like crossing the needles there an exaggerated way of just showing you guys what i'm doing usually when i'm working on it um, I pass one needle through and then the other. And so at this step, if you want to reinforce it, it can help you later, um, but you don't have to. And there's a step later where we'll come back and you'll get a chance to reinforce it. Okay, and I'm switching to some super duos. And you'll wanna bring on one, there's two, And I'm putting a size eight in between each one. I'm going for a total of five, there's three, four, and I'm just working with one side at the moment. Okay, and once you've got five, set that one aside. Do the same thing on this strand. There's two. Okay, there's five on that side. And now what we wanna do is bring that together and bring it together with another segment that kind of looks like this. So again, two size eight beads. I'm gonna bring that down. And then just one on the other side. and come through that second uh, size eight bead that we had on the other strand. So I'm crossing those strands, bring it together. And so what you should get is a little loop, a little join like that. And we're just gonna create another um, right angle weave segment on top of it. So two beads, and one bead. Oops. It looks a little different. Oh, you guys, I'm so sorry. I did, I did a step that I'm gonna need to pull that back out. I know some of you were out there saying, hey, Wait, you weren't supposed to add those two at that step. I heard you, but I heard you too late. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm backing up to the part where I had just added. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, I'm backing up to where I'd added these five, two, three, four, five on each side. You just need to add one size eight on one side for this stage. That little right angle weave segment that we're creating, you create it after you join this part. I get caught out by that because the bracelet last week and the earrings for next week are just a little tad different. So there we go. So there's what I meant to do. <laughs> so that's joining the five on each side together through one of the size eight C beads. Okay, now fixing the top part. So now I need two on one, one needle and one on the other. I will have time to do this again. So um, if I just confused anyone, no worries. We're, we will have time to walk through it one more time. Okay. 
and I'm bringing down. There we go. So that's what it should look like with, with just those little four, um, what looks like that little right angle weave set of four size eight beads sitting on top there. Great. Okay, now we're good. Now I am going to reinforce this one. It doesn't matter which side you choose. Just pick one of the, um, you know, one of the threads and go through all those four size eight beads again. Because you see how loose that is? It'll be hard to work with like that for the next step that we're going to do. So I'm just going to go all around, all around again there. Okay. So that's pretty tight. And so you'll want to go through with each needle, we're going to do this on both sides and bringing the needle through the next eight. And then I'm going to go through the top hole of the next super duo. And if you recall, the super duos have two holes. It's a symmetrical bead. So when we strung them, we just picked up, you know, whichever one we could get. Now that it's strung through one side, the one I'm referring to as the top is the other side. So I'm going to go through that one. And I'm calling it the top or the outside hole. And so this one is a, if you remember from last week, we were putting two super duos in between each super duo and going through the top hole. I have to keep reminding myself that in this one, the design is a little different because we're trying to make it look more like a circle. And the cool thing about super duos is you can start making shapes just by changing up the number that you put in between. And so when you're working at home, if you want to play with this, you can get it to work for lots of different bead sizes this way. And what I did to make it round was I just made the top thinner than the middle. So I just put one super duo and I'm going to go through the top hole of the next one. There's that. And now I'm going to put two because here's kind of like the middle of what I want to look like a circle. So two and then going through the top hole of the next bead. And so whenever I'm adding, I'm getting some loose, this, this side is loose. So I'm going to go ahead and just match what I did so that it'll tighten up over here. I'm going to go through that eight. And go through the top hole on the next super duo or the outside hole. Pick up one. And go through there. And now I'm going to pick up two. Okay. I think this one accidentally went through the next. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this in reverse now. I'm going to put two and then one in between each of these. So here's two. And bring that down. And then one. And when you go through that last super duo, go ahead and just let it go through the next size eight bead, that one that's kind of below there. Go ahead and let it go through that one. And set it aside for now. Let's finish this side. And here's one more. And same thing, it's gonna just kind of go through that first size eight bead. And that's good, because that's where we're headed. So I'm gonna go through there. Okay. So set one of those strands aside for now and then just pick up whichever side you want and go down through the next size eight bead, the eight millimeter bead. And then we're gonna loop around through these little beads down here through the crystal and back up. So this is that first opportunity to reinforce it. 
And there'll be one more like this at the end. So if you'll get a total of three passes through this little section here. And you don't want to go too crazy pulling with too much tension, keeping in mind that you want it to dangle. And don't let it, let it be loose, but um, it doesn't have to be like aggressively tightened, if you know what I mean. It, it's just like a gentle kind of tension. And often after I've pulled my beads through, you see watching it wiggle, I'll flatten it again. So I know that I've got pretty good tension there. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and weave to a point where I can add my 10 millimeter focal in the middle. So going through the next eight, and it doesn't matter which side you go through. Actually, I think in the handout it says to go through this one. So I'm gonna to listen to the handout and go through that one. That's the one my thread's exiting for the other side. I went through that, this eight right here. And I'm gonna continue through the next eight in that little segment. And now come up through the center beads. So this is the inside hole of the super duo, the next eight, and inside hole of the next super duo, eight after that. And then if you can, keep going through the inside hole of that middle super duo. Once you get there, go ahead and grab your 10 millimeter bead. And so for me, I'm just using this wooden 10 millimeter bead. Go through it. And this is that figure eight. I'm gonna bring the hand out over. And you see how the figure eight looks? So we're, we're exiting from the, in, in the top, top part from that inside hole. We're gonna go through the bead and then we're gonna loop through the super duo that's in the middle on the other side through its inside hole, come back through, and then continue up. And so here's what that looks like. We go through the super duo on the other side. And also I got some um, really great feedback last week after the bracelet class we did that um, somebody used some tiny little seed beads, some little 11s or even some 15s to cover the thread here. On most of my designs, uh, the thread isn't showing enough that I felt like I needed to do that. But if you're looking at yours and you're thinking, oh, I wish I could make that thread less visible, then try putting some little beads on the strands as you're going in and exiting from that, that bead, just the one we're setting in the center, if you like it. I like it kind of just like it is, so I'm sticking with that. But so that's mainly, that's mainly the component. And now we need to add the jump ring. So in the handout, it shows the design made with a jump ring so that you can put a chain through it. But I'm gonna show you guys, I'll show you this first and then I think we're doing great on time. I can probably make another one and at that time I'll explain if you wanted to do this version. One way you could do that. But so starting with the jump ring, keep going through all of those. I'm just going through the inside holes and the next eight until I get to the top eight here. That's this one. And then come up through the next eight here. Make a turn. Pick up one size eight bead. and then get a jump ring and any jump ring will be fine. Make sure it's closed. If it's not closed, try, um, you'll wanna close it first. I think I have one here that I closed earlier. That one looks a little bit open. But yeah, just use some um, bent nose and chain nose pliers to lock it closed. Go through it. Pick up one more size eight. And I'll come back through the eight where we're exiting. That's this one here. And you'll have to encourage the jump ring to sit towards the middle. You don't want to have two eights on one side. You see what I mean? You're gonna have to make that jump ring sit in between the two. It was a lot easier last week with the class because it's, um, too small for the beads to get through it. But this one, I'm just gonna have to help it a little bit. There we go. Hmm. 
<laughs> thought I had it. Once I tighten it, it won't um, it won't wiggle through that jump ring anymore. But I need to get it right on this pass. So here we go. I'm gonna tighten that down so it should look like that. We're treating that jump ring kind of like another bead. Um, and last week also um, we talked about we could put two jump rings here. That would make it more like the width of the size of an eight, eight um, seed bead. So two jump rings would be great too, if you're wanting to try that. I'm reinforcing this. I'm gonna go through this twice more. So for a total of three passes through it. That was pass number two. And here's number three. Okay. And when you get done making that third reinforcement pass, pick up another eight and cross the intersection. So in right angle weave, what, what's called crossing the intersection is normally you'd have to turn and turn and turn to get down to this other section. We're going to jump it with an eight bead which I think makes a cute little flower shape. And it also it has the added bonus of making this stay put. Hey, Danielle, it's Carmi. Yeah. A couple of your regulars really want to know if they can use a wire guardian there at, because you've taught them that in the past. Yeah, I, I think you could. Um, well, that would actually be kind of nice, actually. I think it would. I'm using eights. So my first thought was, ah, my wire gurney is going to sink in there. But why not put some little 11s on top of it or 10s? Let's pull it out and look. Because, yeah, that's really finicky. And I, um, I do think that it would hang great with two jump rings. The only thing is it would be um, thicker. You know what I mean? Need a little knot there. I'm going to be unlazy and actually remove my needle, guys. Here we go. This is rapid deconstruction. There we go. Okay, so back to the starting point. That's a really good idea. And I have wire guardians here. One more in here. And in case anyone doesn't know what these are, um, I do have some original packaging sitting next to me. This is just my way of saving them, but um, here's what they look like on, on the wall at Michael's. They look like this. Sorry for the glare. Um, they're called, they're, they're labeled as number one. Wire Guardian. So there's those. And I'm just going to need to rethread my needle super quick here. Let me take that. So, yeah, with the wire guardian to be a pendant, you'll still need a jump ring, but you just put the jump ring on your wire guardian. We'll, we'll do that. So, exiting from that top little kernel there, I'll pick up another eight and go through the wire guardian here. Okay, and then you want to go around the well. So that's just go around the top and come out the other side. I hope that's easy to see. But one way to get it to stay put, the thread I mean, to make it stay in the well is to pinch it like this when you're pulling the wire, or sorry, pulling the thread, and it'll stay put. And bring that down. Now we're gonna need another eight. Before we go back through that last bead, we're gonna have to pick up an eight. And then it should sit pretty symmetrically on top when we go back through this one. Let's see. Okay. And so I actually wanted to show this, but do you see how that, how it's sinking into the size eight bead and it just won't sit on top? That was my main worry. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put some size tens you know, just in that spot. And again, I'm gonna try to get that needle out of there. Okay. So 
So back to where we started here, exiting from that last bead. Now we're gonna, let me re-thread my needle real quick. Okay, so we just, we're still gonna need that eight, bring that eight down. But now also grab a 10 and then come through the wire guardian again, just like we did before. And now we're talking, see, now it's not gonna, not gonna fit inside of the bead. That's very helpful. There you go. Okay, same thing as before. We're gonna need in reverse, a 10 and an eight. And then go ahead and go through that top kernel there. Oh, the kernel, I call it a kernel. I'm talking to the right angle lead shape. Um, the top of that segment there. Okay. That works great. That's a great idea. I like it. I'm gonna reinforce it one time. Um, I would try to do it three times, but I think it'll start to get really tight. The wire guardians are pretty tight and that extra strength will, will help. One thing about um, if you're struggling to get through your wire guardian, likely what's happened is you've gone through the thread as well. So whenever it's just not working for me and I'm sitting there trying to get it through, I start over, I'll pull the needle back out and try again. And this time kind of move it around a little bit, just making sure you're not puncturing the thread because that's really the barrier. That's what's causing it not to go through. Okay, so I went through there and just like before to make that little flower shape, I'm gonna pick up an eight here. Go through, cross that intersection. And there you go, there's one side. That's really pretty, I like it. Good idea. I don't know who to credit for that idea, but that's a great idea. And coming up. And then one more. And go through. And I am going to end up having to go through that again because that happens when we add the other side here. So it's doable. Let's do it. I'm just going to be really careful. There we go. I think I'm even using a 10 right now. Don't tell anybody, but it doesn't seem like a 12 to me. <laughs> I mix my needles up. I need a solution for that. Go down through here. You yep, can see it's really tight, so I just need to move that around a little bit more. Got it. Okay. And that will be the last pass I can get through that wire guardian. <laughs> but we did it. Okay. And so all that's left to do now for this is to weave it in. Lots of different ways you can do that. Here's what I did on most of the samples. Um, this is the back, so I'm switch back to the front here. What I did was exiting from where am I? I am in this, I'm on this eight right here. I'm going to continue through the next one. And I'm going to use this strand. So this is top strand, the one that we used to put the wire guardian on and all of that. I'm going to untangle it. And then uh, I'm going to use it to reinforce the inside pass and then take the tail that's down here, the one we left it over here, bring it back down through the crystal. So we're going to go through that size eight seed bead, the eight millimeter focal, loop all around here. Hoping it lets me. There we go. Okay, go through. Back up and use this side to reinforce the outside. It's a little time consuming. I'll just show you guys one side, but so coming up through the eight, eight on the other side, and now all the outside beads here. And so I'll just go all the way around until I get to here. And then I'll probably turn. But does anyone have any questions about weaving? And I, I know it can be kind of boring to watch me sit and weave through. Um, 
but if anyone has any questions about it, I can I can do so. Hey Danielle, I think you're good to keep going. Keep going? Yes. With like starting another one or just keep showing weaving in? No, I think the weaving in um, is covered. Um, covered. Gotcha. Okay. There, the you have a lot of people who would love to see how you added that necklace. Gotcha. Let's start another one really quick. I'll just go a little bit faster through it. How are we feeling about the yellow? I was feeling like the yellow was hard to see. Should I swap that? I'm thinking I'll switch. Um, I'll switch to turquoise here. I feel like it's every day. It's different for, you know, how it's going to look. All right. So I'm going to flatten this one. I'm doing things a little out of order there. Flatten one side, cutting about 45 inches or so. Some scissors here. And I already flattened one side. I'm going to do the other side. And again, this is just to get that needle easier to thread. Or get the thread easier to thread, I should say. Okay, so there's one needle on. Next needle on. Okay, we need another crystal. So grab a crystal here, go through it. We'll bring it down to the midpoint. And then um, you can either pick up two size tens, or you could just go right to picking up two size eights. And here's what that looks like. I wasn't sure which of these was going to look better when I was originally um, creating it. And at the time, the tens looked a little better. But every time I make it, I change my mind. So I just wanted to throw that option out there for you guys. I need a few more of those beads. So here's what two size eights on either side of the crystal would look like. But again, you'll, you'll want to play with that and see if you like the look of it. So the next thing you need is an eight millimeter bead. And it can be any bead you want. This is one that's about eight millimeters. And um, to be honest, it doesn't have to be eight millimeters. You could, you could use a different size bead here. I was just going for, I was going for kind of like a, more like a drop look, but here's another place where you could customize it. So bring both needles through the eight millimeter bead. And then bring both of your needles through another size eight seed bead. All right. And there's your little drop. And so we need to create that little, um, little right angle weave segment. So two eights on one needle, one eight on the other. And cross just through that, that second bead added on the first side. So you'll get that little, looks like a little right angle weave square. Okay, and so um, from here, it's five super duos that are spaced with an eight millimeter bead. And two, and an eight millimeter bead. Oops, there's four. And five, so five super duo beads, pick up whatever hole, it doesn't matter at this point, with a size eight seed bead in between each one. Bring that down. Copy what we did over here. There's five. Okay. Let's join these together really quick. It's another size eight. 
and just go ahead and cross that one. So going through that eight in different directions with the strands. Should pull it tight and do a little oval. You'll need two more eights on one. One eight on the other. And then go through just that second one there. Okay, I'm going to reinforce that. So it's super loose until this, um, until this reinforcing step, it'll just wiggle and wiggle. So this really helps with that. There we go. Okay. So here's where we are. We need to add the outside beads. So what, um, what I was saying earlier about making a circle shape, um, if you put just one here and then two, two, and then one, you'll get a rounded um, look. So that's, that's what I've done here. And again, with the super duos, they have two holes. So now I'm going through what I call the outside hole, which is the one we haven't used yet. The one that's kind of free right here. So to get there, we're here, we're at this top bead, go through the eight that's next in line here, and then continue through the top four of the super duo. So I just like that. And now just pick up one super duo so far, go through the top hole of the next one, the next red one here, and now pick up two. There's two. Oops. And you'll need two more. I'm just gonna do one side this time and then switch to the other. Now back to one. And when you go through the last outside hole of that last super duo, it'll just intuitively take you through the next size eight. Go ahead and go through that one. I'm gonna set that aside for now and just repeat that same thing on the other side here. Down through the eight. And through the top hole, the outside hole of that next super duo bead. Kind of flipped it to make it easier to work with um, in my hand. So here's one super duo. Go through the top hole of the next one. There's two. Here's two more. And one last bead, super duo bead. Top hole of that last super duo. And continue down through this eight. All right. So it doesn't actually matter which side now we use, but with one of your sides, they're both exiting through one of the eights on the side, right? Yeah, one coming out here and, um, and one coming out over here. I'm gonna just use this one here to go down through the eight, size eight seed bead, through the eight millimeter bead. And then I'm gonna wrap around the beads that are surrounding that crystal. Just gonna go through one side. Through here. Back up through this side, through the eight, through the seed bead above. And now what I wanna do is go back through this next eight. I'm going through the one my other thread is exiting from. Turn, go through the next eight in that little writing belief segment there. Going through this one. I'm trying to get to the middle. That's what I'm doing here. I'm traveling around so I can get to this inside row. So remember we added the super duos to the hole on the outside. What I'm doing now is just going through the inside holes again. 
and I want to weave until I reach the center super duo. So we have five. So here's one, two, third one is my center. We'll keep going. And here's the center. Okay, 10 millimeter bead. Bring that out. Go through it. Bring that down. So here we're exiting from the top inner hole of that last super duo. I'm crossing over here. I'm going to go in the opposite direction through the middle super duo. And I'm doing that so that I form like what looks like a cross shape, like a figure eight shape, going through that bead in the center. It has the effect of centering it. On the other side, when you get back to where you left off over here, go through that super duo bead in the other direction. So your tail will be coming out of the top, come in through the bottom. And now just keep traveling through that inside row up until the top. And now it's time for our chain. And when you get to this part here, just keep in mind that you're exiting from the inner hole of the super duo. So you may have the instinct to just jump up to this one. But remember, we're on the inside uh, pass here. So you do need to go through this way. So through the eight, that's kind of in between the two super duos. Coming up to the side eight, it's that right angle weave turn again. And there you go. So now I'm where I need to be for side one. But I want my necklace to have two sides. So I'm going to use this handy tail over here and I'm going to turn. So here's an opportunity to reinforce coming back down through. The reason I'm doing this is I'm exiting down this direction, going down from this eight. And it really doesn't have anywhere to go except for this next direction, right? So that's why I'm doing that. And then added bonus of a third pass through this little section down here. And not too tight. Not just because it's a glass brio, but because um, you want it to hang a little bit freely with some swing to it, right? Okay, when you come back up through the other side and continue through the eight millimeter and through the size eight, see so if you can sitting on top of it. We're gonna have to think a little bit here about, I wanna be exiting from this bead and I wanna be exiting in the opposite direction. So to get there, which side do I wanna go through? If I go through here, it puts me here, puts me going through around this way. Then I go through this, this, and I turn them that way. So that's what I want to do. So I'm going to come up through this side. And that's the side that's the opposite of my exiting tail on the top. So in, in right angle weave, you're always going to end up going the different direction. So I'm passing through the inside row here, using it as just a place to travel. And if you get this um, far and you, if you don't end up exiting the direction you want to be, don't sweat it because you can, that's, it's totally fixable. Because see, that's what just happened to me. <laughs> All that deliberation and I still got the wrong side. So if that happens to you too, number one, choose the one on the other side because I got that wrong. Um, if you find yourself here, we're just going to use a bead to turn down here. So this is a little advanced trick, but I'm going to use my thread bridge. Don't tell anybody. I'm cheating. I pulled through that thread bridge here. Now I get to go the opposite way. So I use the thread bridge to turn there. It's the, the one that was connecting this bead to that bead. I just, I hugged it, right? And use that to turn. 
Now finally I'm where I need to be. Thread on either side there. And so the way I made this chain, and that was totally up to you what style you'd like to do. But I thought it was cute to have two size eights and then a size 10, and then two eights and a 10. And then I just kept going just like that until I reached the top. And all I did was looped around, which is actually a, a closed jump ring in this case, but um, I just looped around the jump ring and came back down and then wove into the pendant. I'll show you guys like a short version of that. I won't do the full length here, but this is another really cool place where you could do a wire guardian though. And that would be superior to what I did there. I switched my pattern. What? Here we go. It's Friday, you guys. It is definitely Friday. <laughs> Here we go. Two, one. And again, this is totally up to you, like just what you like, the look of. You could even try to make one of our other chain styles. We did a bunch of classes, like where we made like a peyote chain. Um, that would be really cute here. I wish I thought of that before, then I could have just said, hey, go look at that one. But... All right. So question, you guys want me to put a wire guardian on this or finish it the way I did on my sample? Danielle, I'm conscious of time, so. Um, oh, yeah, we're at 3.52. Woo, where'd that go? Um, Really quickly, then I'll just so we can see the symmetry here. All right. So yeah, all you would really need to do here is just go through and find a wire guardian. Actually, I'll just throw a jump ring on here. And any jump ring is fine. Any wire guardian. If you did a wire guardian, um, well, starting with the jump ring, you, you bring the jump ring through. And you just go down, right? Come back down. Um, alternatively, what you could do is, uh, let's see, I would go eight, 10, wire guardian, super fast here, over the well. And then again, eight, sorry, 10 and then eight. You would need a reverse on the side. And I'm gonna skip that eight here and go through the next two. It keeps my chain kind of lined up like that. You guys have seen me do that before. That's one of our little tricks that we like to do for our pendant. So all you would do is weave down again and then just weave into your pendant. Any questions on that? I know I went really fast, sorry about that. like uh, everyone's good. <laughs> that is good. All right, well, we've got seven minutes. I can show um, I can show some uh, stuff that for that's coming up next week. Bro, I'll do that really quick here on the mat. And then um, next week is these earrings. So and if you've been with us for this class and the last one or even just for this one, you have all the tools you need to make this. It's super similar. It's just, um, we're gonna do some graduated counts to accommodate different size beads. This is an eight millimeter. That's a, a six and that is a four. And it's the same crystals. So if you bought a strand of these crystals, you get lots of them. You'll get a lot of jewelry out of this one little strand here. I made all my samples plus still having all this left. So that's all you'll need for next week. The same pearl strands we had for this class and, and those. And um, so this, this idea, this concept can be translated into a bracelet, another idea. And so what you're seeing here is just an extension of everything I've shown you. And it's just souped up into something where you've got 10 millimeter, eight millimeter, six millimeter, four millimeter graduated up and down. And then you know that little flower that we've been making um, at the top of all of these pieces, this, this little flower, if you did right angle weave segments and you just kept making new ones, a new segment, a new segment, you could just keep going down, add an eight, 
go through the next kind of neat, go through the next. And that's how that was done. We have a video on this. We did a video um, that will be coming out soon. And so next week's class, we'll talk a little more about it because the earrings are made the exact same way. Okay, I'm gonna switch back so I can see you guys, or you can see me. <laughs> oh, I was sweating there for a minute because I got it wrong first. I forgot my own pattern. It happened. <laughs> but I um, wish you guys a great Friday, and uh, I will hope to see you next week on our class next Friday, where we're going to make earrings. All right. Have a good weekend, everyone.